Intros are pretty stupid, so let's get right into this. You know, I've realized I've made a lot of guides on my channel, but never one covering the general combat of the game. And given that I constantly still see people talk about how slow the combat is for this game, and how bad the other general combat guides seem to be on YouTube, I figured I might as well try to correct that. You know this video is probably two years too late, but I think it'll be useful for new players and to help out older players alike in understanding the combat mechanics of the game and what you actually want to do to take advantage of it as much as possible. There's a lot of complexity in this game and many things you can do to speed up combat even in the early game to make your experience better. There's a lot of misconceptions that I still see and would like to correct, so let's get started. So, the one thing to keep in mind about Xenoblade 2 Combat is that everything builds upon a previous action. At the most basic level of this, you have auto attacks. When you stand close to an enemy with your weapon drawn, you will automatically attack the enemy without having to do anything. Very complex so far, I know. Each weapon has a sequence of auto attacks that repeat on a cycle, and each attack in the cycle will do more damage than the previous. By standing still, it will gradually use all auto attacks before repeating the cycle again. If you move around, you cannot auto-attack, and when you stop moving, you will begin the auto-attack sequence from the beginning. Upon landing an auto-attack, you will charge up your arts in the bottom right corner of the screen. These are the abilities bound to the B, Y, and X buttons. When the purple outline fully surrounds the art, then that means the art is ready to use. Arts are abilities that your driver can use that have a variety of effects such as breaking, healing, and of course, doing damage. These arts will easily out-damage your auto-attacks. The total damage depends on your equipment, your blade, and the damage ratio of the art which can be increased by leveling up the art in the menu. Upon using an art, you will charge up your blade special which is also in the bottom right corner of the screen bound to the A button. One mechanic to keep in mind related to arts and auto attacks is cancelling. Essentially you can use your art right when an auto attack connects to cancel your auto attack into that art. This will both save time from animations as well as increase the damage ratio of the art and charge the blade special further. But wait, you might say, look at how long it takes to charge up some of these arts from just auto-attacking. There must be a lot of downtime in these fights just trying to build up your arts. The combat seems really slow. Well, my friend, let me introduce you to a couple techniques you can do to enhance your experience. The first is a very simple mechanic known as auto-attack cancelling. Many of the weapons in this game have a much faster first auto-attack than subsequent auto-attacks, including the popular Aegis Blade and Variable Saber. By lightly tapping your stick upon the first auto attack and the sequence finishing, you can reset the entire sequence and use your first auto attack again. By employing this method, you can charge up your arts much quicker. This typically helps more in the early game, but can still be useful in certain scenarios later on. The second thing you can do is actually use good pouch items. Pouch items are consumables that will often be ignored by newer or inexperienced players, but are actually a fantastic use of the gold you will obtain. Do not get me wrong, many of these pouch items have very useless effects, but there is one effect that is particularly useful in drastically speeding up the combat of this game, and those are art recharge pouch items, which is the primary effect of the dessert class of pouch items. By going into any dessert shop, you will find a selection of these. Typically, you would want to get the Narsapir Jelly from Argentum since it is always available regardless of progress, but if you cannot afford it, any item with .3 art recharge can suffice. Upon unlocking the second pouch for your party members, you can even use two desserts which can give you some very powerful recharge effects to where you may not need to auto-attack much, if at all anymore. The third and final major thing to mention is an ability that every driver has on their skill tree called Arch Chain. It allows your drivers to start cancelling their arts into themselves. If you combine this with the art recharge pouch items, you can often infinitely cancel your arts and continuously cancel them into your other arts. And for this, there isn't really any timing required. You can just mash your other arts while using an art and it will automatically cancel at the end of the animation. Arts Chain as an ability really unlocks its full potential when using the Art Recharge Pouch items. Being able to consistently use your arts will also charge up your special meter faster, giving you half of a special level each time you use an art after another. There are certain arts and abilities that can also charge up your arts faster, like Mithra's Critical Recharge ability or Corvin's Art Recharge when evading attacks. Overall, being able to consistently use arts will open up the rest of the combat to be much faster and more fluid. So the next aspect of combat is discussing blade specials. Blade specials are built up by using arts and have four levels, and you can use a special of any of these levels. 
The first three levels are charged normally by using arts and are the specials you see on the blade's skill trees. Each blade has different specials with their own unique effects, and higher level specials will also have stronger damage ratios. Leveling up the special on the blade's skill tree will increase the effect, and also increase the damage ratio, so it is all around useful. The level 4 blade special can only be used if you have max affinity with the blade in battle, and can be used after charging up a level 3 and waiting a few seconds, and it will charge up automatically. The level 4 special will always have strong damage and a strong effect no matter where you are in the game, and it also offers invincibility frames during use, so it can be used to essentially dodge certain dangerous attacks enemies could be using. This is an excellent strategy if you're struggling with an enemy. Blade specials will usually do more damage than arts, but being able to consistently use arts means you can use more blade specials. So now we should discuss what blade specials allow us to do. By using a blade special, you start a blade combo on an enemy. This will be the meter on the right above the enemy health bar. The blade combo will apply after using the blade special and will usually have a damage ratio of its own related to the damage dealt by the blade special. Percentages can be seen in this chart, which I will also link below. Some of these specials have a damage over time effect that will last as long as the blade combo remains active. So by using any blade special, you can set up a level 1 blade combo. Blade combos have three total levels. To use the second level of a blade combo, you will need to use a level 2 blade special or higher. And to use the final level of the blade combo, you will need to use a level 3 special or higher. You must use subsequent levels of the blade combo while the previous level is still active. If your teammates have blades that can use the levels of the blade combo required, you can press ZR or ZL to use them. Using a full blade combo allows you to do a lot of damage with the high damage ratios, and it's important to be able to know how and when to use these to have the best effect on the enemy. Upon using a full blade combo on an enemy, you will apply a ceiling effect depending on which of the eight elements the final part of the blade combo was, which can sometimes be useful, and you will also set up an orb that will rotate around the enemy. This orb signifies that you have used a blade combo that finished with that element. It also cuts your damage with that element by 25%, which seemingly is bad, but there can be a payoff to this. For one thing, you cannot set up duplicate orbs on an enemy, therefore you can only get a maximum of 8 by using the blade combos that correspond with all of the different elements. Although in almost every situation, if you need 8 orbs to take down an enemy, your damage is severely lacking, and you are likely being suboptimal, but we'll get into that later. So upon setting up some orbs on an enemy, you can proceed to use a chain attack. This feature is unlocked during Chapter 3. If you look at the meter at the top left of the screen, you'll see it gradually fills over time based on a number of different factors related to how combat is going. One bar can be used to revive an ally if they die, but if you fill the entire meter, you can press the start button to use a chain attack. A chain attack can function as a way to use invincibility frames to dodge dangerous attacks as a last resort, but more so than that, it is a way to do a lot of damage to an enemy and also give yourself a lot of experience if needed. You will notice it will display the orbs you have set up on the top of the screen. During a chain attack, time basically halts and you will, are allowed to pick an equipped blade from all three of your party members in order to use their blade specials. The first round of the chain attack will be their level 1 specials. You will notice a multiplier on the left side of the screen that shows you the additional damage the specials are doing in the chain attack. By using a special, you will do damage to one of the orbs at the top of the screen. The selection is typically random and you will need three hits to destroy one of these orbs. However, if you can use a bit of strategy, you can use an element that is opposite to one of those orbs to guarantee that you will hit that orb and do two total hits of damage. This allows you to target orbs and break the orb faster. If you break an orb during a round of a chain attack, you will both increase all damage by another 200% and can extend the chain attack at the end of the round by hitting the command prompt, which is the B button. This gives all your drivers another round in the chain attack. The second round will use level 2 specials, and if you extend the round again, you will use level 3 specials for all further rounds. This can help you do a lot of additional damage to enemies, and is typically a good way to finish all fights. Using two blades of the same type in the first round to target an orb is also a smart idea to ensure you can continue the attack past the first round. If you have set up four or more orbs, you can also pull off a full burst. When you break enough orbs, the meter in the top left of the screen will fill up and trigger the full burst. All remaining orbs will break, adding a massive extra damage ratio for each one, and the driver who triggered it will use their level 4 special in an art. This will usually give you some insane damage, which can destroy enemy health bars if you have not already. Furthermore, any additional damage you deal to an enemy after their health bar is depleted will show the bonus percent under the damage multiplier. 
This bonus percentage is how much your experience, skill points, and rewards will be multiplied by after the fight ends. This mechanic is one of the major reasons there's no grinding in the speedrun since it can be used to always ensure we have the needed experience. This can make saving a chain attack until an enemy is almost dead a perfectly viable strategy as well. As you can see, the entire combat system has mechanics that lead to something else, and it all depends on using arts as much as you can. Auto attacks let you use arts, arts let you use specials, specials let you use combos and create orbs, and orbs let you do a lot of damage and chain attacks. That's the general idea here. Now I want to absolutely clarify, just because you can have all 8 elements in your party and set up a big 8 orb chain attack full burst does not at all mean that this is how you should play the game. Newer players always fall into this trap. On the contrary, most fights should never require more than two or three orbs if you are setting up your blades and drivers properly and understand some strategies of the game. Many fights may not need chain attacks at all either. There are many things you can do to increase your efficiency and have much more fun with the game, so now let's examine some other aspects of the combat system that are very important to understand. So the major thing you really want to understand is breaking. I do not think it is an understatement to say that the entire combat system revolves around this one effect. It's what allows you to control the tempo of a battle and also majorly increase damage because it opens up fusion combo bonuses. So Break is considered the first stage of the driver combo. Your party members on certain weapons have the ability to break enemies with certain arts. Break will last for 10 seconds. From here, if you have a driver that can use a topple art, you can topple the enemy to both halt their damage for a time, temporarily increase your own by 25%, and get a free health potion to keep yourself healthy. Topple will only last for 5 seconds. While toppled, a party member with a launch art can launch the enemy for an additional 5 seconds, which will increase all damage by 50% and summon another health potion. From here, you can smash the enemy with a smash art for some nice damage, a huge health potion, and increase damage over time for a currently set up blade combo, and get some item bonuses if you really want those. If you can combine stages of the driver combo with stages of the blade combo, the term is called a fusion combo. And this is why being able to break an enemy is so crucially important, because fusion combos are the key to combat. Properly taking advantage of fusion combos will allow you to increase your damage quite a bit. Fusion combos have a bonus multiplier that is separate from any other multiplier that increases the effects of certain things, most notable being blade combo damage, blade combo duration, and even damage overall. I won't bore you with specifics, but the main things to keep in mind is that using a blade combo while a driver combo is active will increase the damage of the blade combo by a significant amount, and will also increase all damage to an enemy while the same driver combo remains active. For instance, if you use heat on a break, it will not increase the damage of the blade special itself, but will increase the damage and damage over time effect of heat by 50%. All damage done to the enemy while the break is still active will also do 50% more damage. This damage bonus will end when the break wears off or if the enemy is toppled. So you can now use a level 2 blade combo on top of this break again, and it will apply the 50% bonus damage to the blade special, which will make the combo do more damage automatically, and then still increase the blade combo damage because you used another fusion combo. Best of all is that these fusion combo bonuses can stack, so if your break remains active after this, then you will get even more additional damage to the enemy as long as the break remains active. So what does this mean? Well, it means that if you set up a fusion combo by using a blade combo on top of a driver combo and then chain attack, you can get a massive damage bonus on the chain attack that is separate for the other multipliers. On the other side of the fusion combo coin, using a driver combo when there is an active blade combo will increase the duration of the blade combo. Smashing will also increase the damage over time effect if there is one active, and it will increase it by the fusion combo bonus percentage. Killing enemies with consistent driver combo locks and damage over time is a very viable strategy. You just have to halt your own blade combo usage, and you can watch the enemies slowly bleed to death. It is for this reason that breaking is once again so important. Fusion combos open up so many aspects of combat that can give you, that can give you a much easier time, and it makes accessories like the beta or master scope very good to use in every situation just to raise your break chances. Even if your damage isn't that great, being able to lock some strong enemies into a driver combo will greatly raise your chances of success. This is also a reason why Poppy Cutie Pie is considered the best blade in the game, since she has a very spammable 3 hit break art that applies on every hit. No one else comes close to that. So remember to focus on breaking enemies as much as you can, and everything else will follow. So let's talk about setup. A lot of people struggle with combat and speed of the game because they are running some really suboptimal setups. 
As I already mentioned, oftentimes newer players will focus on their party and try to have these setups that are just a bunch of blades and all their different elements thrown together and trying to make everyone stick to some predetermined role. You restrict yourself so much by doing this. It's often better to focus primarily on a few powerful blades than to try to spread yourself too thin, and it's often better to stack multiple blades of similar typing to make getting strong combos easier. Swapping between blades can have benefits at times, but typically combat is much better if you are only using one blade primarily for damage on yourself and leaving the other aspects of combats to your AI. You want to make sure you're filling out the blade charts of your stronger combat blades as much as you can. Trust levels increase the damage of your blades by quite a bit, the auto attack of course, but also your special damage will increase with each level and it culminates at S plus rank at basically double the special damage you were doing previously. Pay attention to the abilities your blades have. Any form of added to damage that has easy conditions to meet, such as cross set collecting potions or wolf freaking max affinity, is a very strong way to boost your damage. This can make your blades much more powerful when you've actually put the effort into using them. Maxing out skill trees will make your specials much better and also make your blades all around very powerful, and raising trust beyond the max is important to really take advantage of the combat post game. Even during the game, focusing on the primary blades you want to use will give you a much easier time, and if you have the DLC, blades like Crosset and Corvin can drastically decrease the time you spend on each enemy during the game. As far as equipment, the only support type accessories you will want a majority of the time is a beta or master scope on your primary breaker. In post game this should be Tori, and during the game it's probably Nia. Besides that, it's often better to try to stack up damage on everyone. Anything that increases your damage with a strong additive against a majority of enemies like these loincloth items is very good. Burst symbols are insanely good for adding a 200% damage bonus to chain attacks at the start for your entire party and you can also stack them. Items that increase your critical damage are also very valuable for blades with a high critical hit rate since it's a separate damage multiplier to other additive damage. Even for tank blades, you're going to want to increase your damage on them rather than getting any tank or aggro based stats. Doing more damage will increase your damage and aggro over much better than any aggro increasing accessories overall. There's really only a few accessories you will want to stick for for basically everyone, and most everything else is going to be not that useful a majority of the time. Similarly, for aux cores, almost every blade should be using Affinity Max Attack. It's the strongest additive aux core with the easiest conditional to hit, and blades that have max affinity will be much more powerful in combat in general. Other good sources of damage are outdoor indoor attack, and there are some other useful aux cores like fusion combo up. Overall, a good player is going to be focused on driver combos and the minimum amount of blade combos needed to take down an enemy. For some enemies in the actual game, you can kill them with a single blade combo, and as you get into post-game where enemies have millions of HP, you may want to try to set up orbs quickly for powerful chain attacks, or if the enemy has a massive amount of HP, you can use damage over time strategies. There is actually a skill tree ability that common blades of all things can get to increase your orb setup efficiency massively. It's called Orb Master, and it essentially will set up an orb of an element whenever a, any special is used and this blade is active. It can make jumping into powerful chain attacks a much quicker process and much more efficient than using multiple blade combos. This game is really a game of knowledge more than anything, and understanding all the tricks to combat can let you have so much more fun with the game. There are many more things you can do in combat, and specific strategies that I did not cover here, but much of that already exists on my channel, so I encourage you to check out my specific videos covering that. If you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to subscribe and look forward to future content. With all the recent concerns in the world, I should have some more time to make videos. I've been wanting to make some over this next week, so please look forward to that. All of the relevant links to my socials will be in the description below. As a final note, if you love the Xeno series, I also encourage you to go watch my video about Xeno Saga, as it's another fantastic game series and it's probably my favorite video I have on my entire channel. With all that being said, I hope you guys have learned something today, and thank you all so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.